How's everybody doing? Welcome to the fish room. Today's video I'm going to be talking about moving an aquarium. Um, so this is kind of a part one. What we're going to really focus on today is prepping yourself before you move the fish. Um, so whenever you're moving a tank, if you just want to get this real quick, um, basically you have to drain all the water out of the tank, uh, catch the fish first, bag them up, put them in buckets with an air stone or just a bucket, whatever you got to do. Uh, depending on how long they're going to be in there, you may need a heater. Uh, but basically, you have to drain the whole tank, you got to take all the ornaments, you got to take the gravel out of the tank. Um, this tank, if you're moving it with a few inches of water and stuff like that, it's not going to transfer well. You may get some cracks. Even if you don't get them right away, you're going to put a lot of stress on the tank. It may leak in the future. So definitely want to get the tank empty with nothing in it, um, especially if you're moving to in a car or in a truck to another location. Uh, if you're going to slide it a few feet across the living room to another location, you can get away with it a little bit, but I still don't recommend it. Um, but basically, you want to drain the tank, save as much of this water as possible. So if you're going to do a big water change, save maybe half the water. If it's a 10-gallon tank, it's pretty easy to get two 5-gallon buckets and just fill them up all the way and save all the water. You can go ahead and move the tank. Uh, the most important thing when you're moving the tank, when you set it back up, is that you have the same filter on the tank and it hasn't dried out. So if you have a sump on the tank, you have a hang-on filter, you have a sponge filter, you want to make sure all of that media stays fresh. Even if it's a little bit dirty, that's actually good. You want to save a lot of that stuff whenever you fill the tank back up and you start. So if you want to just go ahead, catch the fish, drain the whole thing, move it, fill it up, get it to temperature, and then add the fish and have the same old filter on there, it works most of the time. But a big thing that we're going to check for today is test your water ahead of time. So I have these test strips here, um, they're by Tetra. I have a link for them below, you can buy these online uh, if it'll focus in for us here. But uh, I'll have them down below, you can check these out. They're pretty cheap, you get 25 of them, it's like 20 bucks or less, so you're doing like a dollar a strip. So it's gonna last you almost half a year, six months, something like that, if you're testing weekly. Which to be honest, I don't use these test strips very often because I used to do weekly water changes, I stay up on my tanks. Um, but for right now, we are going to test my tank and we're going to test, I have some tap water here, so we'll have some chlorine in there. Um, but I got just fresh water, see what our water is like coming out of the tap, and then we're going to see what our tank's like. Because I'm getting ready to move, so I'm actually moving four 55 gallon tanks, so we got around 200 gallons of water. There's no way I'm going to put all that in buckets, move it to a new location. Um, so basically what I want to do is I'm probably going to end up having about 20 gallons of water, maybe 10 gallons of water with all the same filter and I'm gonna use all new water. So that's a very large water change. And what we're testing for today is how high our nitrates are. So if the fish waste is really high, if I, we're gonna test and find out because it's been about two weeks since my last water change, we're real busy, I'm getting ready to move. Um, so the water changes haven't been top priority. I did sell a lot of my tanks. We're gonna look at that at the very end for you guys that have been following the channel. We'll take a look at the end of the video. Um, but so what we want to do is we want to gradually get our fish ready for that moving day really So today I'm gonna go ahead. I have about a week until I move so I'm gonna do maybe a, a Third water change today give them about two days. Maybe do a 50% Another two days. Maybe I'll do like an 80% water change. So After we test this say I'm at a hundred parts per million. We'll go to like 80 60 40 20, whatever it may be, and then they're gonna to go to about 20 again, maybe 10 or even zero when we do the big move. Um, but especially if you have a tank where you have no water changes in months, uh, you have a fish you've had for years, the nitrates are real high, and you're gonna drain the whole tank, move that fish, give it fresh water, you're probably gonna kill your fish. Um, so today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. All right, so now we're above the aquarium. We're gonna open up our test strips here, and we're gonna dip one into our tank, just like that, move it around, shake off the excess water, lay it flat. It's gonna take uh, maybe 10 seconds to give you a reading. And then we're also gonna take one and we're gonna put it into our tap water to get an idea of what the new water they're gonna go into. Um, you may not need to do that, but I have the test strips, I'm doing the video. I wanna give you guys a good example on how to do this process. Cause sometimes if you're using well water or tap water, uh, there's a little bit of nitrates in our tap water sometimes, maybe five or ten but um even you, you never know till you try especially if you're moving you go to a new location um so let's go ahead we'll take a closer look at this all right so our test strips have been sitting about a minute now uh if you let them sit too long you may get a high reading or false reading 
Uh, but the way this works is you're just gonna peel back off your bottle. And what we're really looking at here is that top line. So it goes 0, 20, 40, 80, and etc. I'll say safe to unsafe zone, and that is reading your nitrates in parts per million. Uh, th the things below are important, the nitrate, things like that. Um, but right now, we don't really have to worry about because we are working with the cycled aquarium. Um, but here is our first drip, and it's pretty high. So this gives me a good idea. But to be honest, I breed my fish to be relatively hardy. Um, and I don't want this to be 10 or 0 because if I sell the fish, I know whoever owns a tank, unless they set up a brand new aquarium, they're not going to have 0. Most people are going to have, realistically, realistically, around 80. Uh, but 20 to 30 is kind of the ideal of the sweet spot zone. Uh, looking at this right now, um, kind of hard to see. If I had to guess, I mean, you guys can kind of see it and eye it up. I'd say we're around 60, uh, kind of right in between the safe and unsafe. And like I said, it's been two plus weeks uh, since I've done a water change. And I'm going to do water changes tonight. Um, but say this was a little bit darker. Say I was in like 160, 120, kind of in that 80 to 160 zone, uh, which I don't really think I am. I'm pretty close to getting in the 80, uh, but it looks a little bit lighter to me. Um, but for this reason, I'm doing my water change. Maybe I'll get down to around 30 after my water change today. And then before I move, I'll do another water change. Maybe I'll get in almost like the 10 or the 20 zone. And then whenever I do the last final move, kind of the last final big water change, these fish are gonna gradually throughout the week not get super stressed and get shocked uh, throughout this process. So that's it right there, our tank. We'll take a look just because I used the test strip on what our tap water's like. And you can see that right there, that is not zero. Um, it's got a little bit of water on there, which is gonna give us a higher reading. But um, it's not high by any means, but you can see that it's not zero. It's got a little bit of color to it. So it gives you an idea of whenever you're moving, um, sometimes people don't even drink their tap water, uh, depending where they live. So I have no idea why, or I mean, I understand why, but I don't know what their water's like. So it's definitely good to test those things. All right, so as you can see, I've done a 50 to maybe a 75% water change on all these tanks here. Uh, I did a little bit more than I planned on, but to be honest, I always do large water changes, uh, so my fish are kind of conditioned to it. Um, so I did all my water changes. Right now, I'm using my Python hose filling this tank up. Uh, if you guys don't know what this is and you're moving tanks and you don't already have one, definitely recommend getting one. Um, I can put a link in the description for it. There are Python hose, you can buy them on Amazon. Uh, huge time saver, especially for filling tanks, no longer carrying buckets. If you wanna go through my order videos, I did um, how to do a fast water change, how I do my water changes, things like that. Uh, but basically I just have this PVC I made, hook it on the tank, I have water coming in through the hose uh, from my sink, you get the temperature set, uh, once it's set, you fill the tank up. I use some uh, dechlorinator. You dechlorinate the whole tank first, so it's a 55 gallon tank. I do uh, 60 gallons just to be safe. And then as you fill, every few inches, I do another 10 gallons whenever I think it's been 10 gallons of volume. So for this tank, I did 60 gallons to start with once I turn the water on, and then it's halfway. So we're working with 20, 30 gallons of water. I'll do that. 10 gallon dose three times as I fill the tank. Uh, so right now, for example, I have my pre-mix dechlorinator here. Uh, I fill this up to the line, which I know is 10 gallons. Spray right where the water's coming in. I know that's 10 gallons. So I'll do that again in a few more inches for 20 gallons. And then once it's filled or about filled another inch, just so it mixes, I'll do my last dose, which is 30 gallons. So I'll just repeat this process, moving the hose tank to tank, filling them up. Um, just so you guys can kind of see the whole process, keeping in touch, trying to stay updated, doing more videos. Uh, that about wraps up the part one to moving a fish tank. You have to condition your fish. Um, that's basically the whole message I'm trying to get across. Uh, before you move your fish, you know you're gonna have to drain a large portion of the tank, if not the entire tank. If you're moving to a new house or a new location, whatever it is, uh, you know you're going to have to do that. Before you even move, start conditioning your fish so you know where the water is going to be. Uh, if your water is already perfect, I, I kind of doubt it, but just get yourself ready. Kind of expect that. Don't be the last day rushing, oh, i got to move my fish tank, and then kill all your fish. So this is going to help you guys move everything around. Hopefully it was helpful. 
Uh, if you're not already subscribed, go below, subscribe to the channel. I've been doing videos for years and I've uh, been slowly doing more and more videos, uh, hopefully better quality videos. Looking to get a new camera here once I get uh, settled in at the new house. Um, but that about wraps up the video. I'm gonna turn around and show you guys a little extra. Uh, the wall behind me, if you remember from my channel, my uh, fish room rack, it's all gone. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, so I turned around, we're in the back corner. And as you can see, my whole rack now, see me over here in the mirror, because this used to be our weight room, I turned it into the fish room. Um, the 40 gallon tanks used to be here in the corner. Then we had our 10 gallon tanks right to the edge of the mirror. And then I had my air pump back there, which ran uh, PVC all along that wall, I had my air, and that would uh, filter all my tanks and my sponge filters. And then here we had 16 20 gallon long tanks, four wide, four high. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go back, check my old videos. Uh, really enjoyed that setup. It was a lot of work, so it's kind of a, a relief. I don't have to do 40 some water changes every single week now. Now I'm doing four or 10 water changes. Uh, so that's definitely kind of a relief. And I'm still gonna be breeding tons of fish. I'll just be more uh, specific and more productive with my time. So I should be able to get nicer fish, get more fish in a fish tank, uh, be able to just really stay on top of everything. But here's the wall. I still gotta do some cleaning from some of the water and stuff splashing there um, over time, just kind of uh, some moisture. So I gotta clean the walls up a little bit, patch some holes, uh, maybe a fresh coat of paint before I leave. Um, but there it is. Um, like I said, like, subscribe, check out my old videos. Right here I'm going to post uh, some of my older videos you can check out. And uh, thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next video.